Well, it is good to be with you this morning, and so we are always excited to come and to celebrate Jesus and to lift his name up high, and that's what we're, our hope is to do today, is to really lift Jesus' name up high. And uh, before we do that, let's just ask uh, God's blessing on the time that uh, we have remaining as we open his word. God, we come before you, and we are thankful. Uh, we're grateful and we're thankful as we follow Jesus in his way. God, we ask that today our hearts would be open to what your word says about uh, your kids and how we live this thing out that you've called us into and adopted us into because of what Jesus did for us. God, we ask that in all that we say and all that our hearts lean toward, that it would glorify you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we've been in this series uh, called Kids, and this is really about like what Like you've accepted Jesus, you've said yes to what he's done for you on the cross, and now you're adopted into this family. So God saves you individually, but he always brings you into this corporate reality of the family of God, into the church. And so what do we do and how do we live this out? And so last week, if you weren't here, um, you kind of need to know where we were at and what we were doing and what we were talking about. And, And last week we said that you matter, you matter for a couple of reasons, many reasons, but one of them is that God sent his one and only son for you. That you were a sinner in need of a savior and that savior was Jesus and, and Jesus came and he rescued you from, from certain punishments. It, it was gonna happen and God's wrath was gonna come upon you and Jesus takes all of that wrath, puts it on to himself, all of your sins on the cross and, and, and you matter to God. The other reason that we know There's like 7 billion people in the world and each one of you sitting here today created in the image of God, uniquely gifted by him, knit together in your mother's womb, every one of you sitting here today and every one of those 7 billion people, totally unique, totally totally connected to, to what God had created in you. We also talked about Uh, one of our issues. And and we have this artificial intelligent programming, this AI programming. It's really not the real you. It's it's this algorithm that we use. And this coding comes from our, our first parents. And our first parents, once they sinned, they taught us how to live this AI programming out. And, and what it is, is that we manage our image. We cover, we cover things up so people see us in a certain way. It, 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 it hides and it's fear-driven. Because why? Because we're all insecure. It just is because we know. We're all insecure. And then finally, when, when someone, uh, someone, we do something wrong, we start blaming not ourselves or not looking at ourselves, we start blaming others. And, and it, you see this in Genesis 3. Our first parents did it, and guess what? So do we. But God doesn't want that for us. He wants something else for us. And, and so Romans chapter 12, and what we're gonna get into today is kind of unpacking what he, what he really desires for us what he, what he really wants for us and how to kind of fight against this. And so we've been going through, and this is, I, 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 I'm kind of embarrassed by this, but we couldn't get through more than one verse a week. And today we're getting crazy and we're gonna get through three through eight, five verses, five verses today. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Romans chapter 12. And last week we challenged Uh, was to be honest about who you are, how God made you with one person that you trust. And hopefully you took that challenge and you did that. We struggle with the mask and we all know that. We struggle with insecurity. And today I wanna start answering the question of not who we are. It's not an identity question. We've already answered that. We are um, blood-bought sons and daughters of the Most High. We're adopted into the family you, you have all the rights. You have the relationship with God. God loves you and he meets you where you're at. He doesn't leave you there, but, he, but we're in this process of knowing him and knowing who we are because of how he is designed. And, and so what I want us to understand today from the text is this. God created you with both strengths and weaknesses and they're both a gift from God. 
They're both a gift from God. And you might be going, what? Weaknesses are a gift from God? Because our, our culture, what does it tell us? Our culture tells us, cover those weaknesses. Don't let anybody see those weaknesses. Don't, 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 bring that, don't bring that there or here. Like you cannot have weaknesses. And the reality is, is we all know we do. And we also know that we have strengths. Because in Romans chapter 12, in verse three, it says this. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but th rather think of yourselves with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. And we talked about this last week. That was the verse that we went through. And this idea of thinking of ourselves soberly, like to take the word of God, to take the word of God and, and, and use it as a mirror of like, this is who I am. This is where, I, this is how I connect. This is, this is my strength. This is my weakness. This is, this is how God created me. That's not an excuse to be a knucklehead. That, that, that God doesn't leave you at knucklehead state. He, he wants to use, he wants to, to use your gifts, your strengths, for his good. He also wants to use your weaknesses. And the weaknesses come in in the next verse. It, 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 and the strengths, they come in the next verse. Because it says this, it says four. When it says four, it usually means this. There is something above it for this reason, is what it's saying. For just as each of us has one body, it's talking about a physical body, with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to the other. And so he says here, you have been given, you, you think of yourself, you think of yourself with sober judgment, because then you start to understand what? This is your identity, this is who you are, this is your strengths and your weaknesses, so that what? So that you understand function. You understand who you are. You understand, like, how do I function in, in the kingdom of God? How do I function in the church? How do I function with my brothers and sisters? Because how many bodies do we have? We have one, right? Like, there's one body, there's one body, and each one of, that, each one of us has a gift. You matter to God, and you've been gifted by God. And so we need to understand who we are. It's a way of fighting against the culture. The culture says you can't show your weaknesses. The weaknesses are bad, like bad things. You know, it, all I'm supposed to do is prop up my strengths. Like my strengths are, that is what I, that's what I need to talk about. And then in the church, we, we were like, we're not gonna talk about our strengths because that doesn't seem humble. But we know we have them. You know what your strengths are. Or maybe you don't, I don't know. So we have homework. I'm just gonna give you the homework right now and we'll talk about this at the end again. But here's your homework. This is what I want you to do. I want you to think through, and if I asked you this question right now, I don't think you could answer this. I want you to go, what are my top three strengths and what are my top three weaknesses? If I asked you that right now, go. No, I'm just kidding. You don't have to yell that out. Uh, I'm just kidding. But write those things down. Because it's a way of thinking. It's a beginning of thinking soberly about yourself. In light of God's word, in light of who we are, like these are my strengths, these are my weaknesses. These are, this is how God, this is how he made me. This is how he created me to be a part of the body. And, and as we look at this, it says, think about this for a second. I belong to you and you belong to me, and we're a happy family. Purple dinosaurs now bouncing in all of your heads, um, right? But we belong to each other. We never think about that in the corporate reality. We never think about that in the church. We may think of a husband and wife, and you've probably heard teachings like the, the two fleshes become one, but in this passage, it says that we belong to each other, that you need to understand your function. You need to understand who you are so that so that we can form this one body, that we can use this. Let me illustrate it this way. 
I love snow days. I still love snow days. And teachers are going, yeah, they're awesome. I don't get the day off though. I like, but I'm so excited about the big storm and my kids get the day off. I don't know why I'm still excited. It just reminds me of those days of old when I got snow days. We should put that in our policy book. Elders, I'm talking to you right now, that we all should get that, right? Like, so like, I'm so excited about snow days. And so it was one of those humdingers. Like it, it like winds blowing, snow's coming in. And it's like a two day snow day. Like those are amazing, right? Like two days off. And I will tell you this, if you don't, if you have four boys and you don't get some energy out of them, when there's snow days, what happens is they tear down your house. There is gonna be a hole somewhere. There's gonna be something broken. And, and, and so you have to figure out you have to figure out how to get energy out of them. So my boys, um, it was a snow day, and I come home to this. All of their mattresses from their bedroom are on the living room floor. And what are they doing? They're practicing how to do backflips and cheering each other on. And so I sit down. Uh, not because I'm nervous they're gonna break something because they heal, right? And they bounce, kind of, they're like bumbles. Like they bounce off the ground. It doesn't really matter. What I'm really worried about is our couches and tables because if they break those, you can't just, just fix those, right? So I'm kind of protecting those and I'm watching them. And it was a pretty good time to watch them do this. Well, the next day I'm thinking, okay, this is gonna last for a little bit. They gotta go to bed because school tomorrow. Well, another snow day happens. This is bad. Right? And so the next day I come home and what are they doing? They're trying to figure out who can last the longest standing on their hands. And so they have, a, they have an iPhone and they're taping each other and timing each other to see who is going to be the winner of the competition. Again, I sit down and I'm protecting our furniture. Like they're gonna land on something, they're gonna break something, or they're gonna go through a window, which would be bad for them, but it'd also be cold for everyone else. And so I'm kind of protecting and kind of monitoring this whole thing. And as I'm sitting there, I started to think, that's a weird compound world word. Like handstand, handstand. And I'm thinking like, that's weird. Like I never am like really like, and it was fun to watch. And, and, and some of them did a little better than the others, and I'm, we're cheering them on, yeah, you know. But like what, what was interesting in the whole thing was this handstand. It kept going in my handstand. Like I'm never that excited when my kids walk into the room. Oh, look at a foot stand, yes, right? Like I don't clap, I'm not excited about that. And, and, and why? Because their feet are doing what they're supposed to do, Right? But a handstand is functioning outside of, of what it's supposed to do. And so we're really excited about that, right? Like some of you, have you ever picked up something with your feet? Like you're too lazy to bend down. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna say, and like, and you just go like this and you grab it with your toes and you're like, yeah, got that. I didn't even have to bend down, right? Like some of you do, you're like, you're pretty excited about that, right? But your feet aren't meant to grab things. Your feet aren't meant to, they're, they're not designed, but we're pretty excited and pretty proud of ourselves when we do that because it's functioning outside of the reality of what it's supposed to be and do. Here's the reality for each one of us. You have been given a gift. Some of you are hands, some of you are feet, some of you are, are ears, and some of you, you, you like have these gifts that God has given to you. And when you discover your purpose, it becomes natural to use them. It becomes natural to, to function in the body as you understand these gifts, as you understand your function. And guess what it does? Like, it, it's just like natural for you. And, and you find peace. You find harmony with all the other parts of the body. It's like this wonderful thing. And this is what Paul is saying here. He's like, hey, you have a function. You've been gifted by God. Like, use your gifts. You need to understand that this is a really awesome thing. You have strengths and you have weaknesses. These weaknesses, this is where it's a gift. And you might have been thinking, like, when is he gonna get to, like, how weaknesses are a gift? Here it is. The reason that it's a gift, my feet need my hands. My, my, my body needs my heart. 
my, my, my body needs my head. Like we need each other. We're interdependent upon each other. We're connected to each other. And so when we don't function, like you are like, I don't know who I am. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. When you don't function in what God has gifted you in, you're actually depriving the body of something, but you're also, you're missing out on the community of. You're missing out on how you're supposed to be interconnected to each other. I need you, you need me, we're a happy family, right? Like we need each other to function properly, to to live this thing out together. And so some of you are going, man, I don't know what my gifting is. And I just challenge you to do the homework because it, it, it creates something in you. It creates community. Let me tell you a story. It's about how Bubba and Sally Sue met. You guys know Bubba and Sally Sue? Um, Bubba grew up on a farm. He, he's, he is strong. He's like farmer strong type of a kid. And so he, he went to grade school and, and how their district worked were there were these small grade schools and junior highs that were out in the, the rural areas. But then when they went to high school, they all came together in this much larger school. Well, when Bubba was in ju- uh, junior high, he was a big fish in a small pond. But this was a different year. He was a freshman in high school. And all these kids came together and and they kind of knew each other maybe from a a distance, but they didn't exactly know each other. They didn't know how each other fit in. They didn't know how each other functioned. And Bubba was really struggling. Bubba was like, man, I'm a farm kid. And some of these kids are suburban kids. Some of these kids are this. Some of these kids are that. And I don't know how I function. And so for three months, he, he didn't know where to sit at lunch. It was really difficult for him. He did see this girl that he thought was very pretty. She was from a different school, different, different, um, different junior high. Her name was Sally Sue, and he found out her name. But Bubba wasn't good with the words. He wasn't good with the ladies. And, and so he was too nervous to talk to her. And, and so he talks to his mom, and he says, Mom, I don't fit in there. I want to go back to the eighth grade. Like, I just want to go back to the eighth grade. And she says, you need to get connected to the school. You need to get connected to an extracurricular activity and, and, and see if those will be your people. Like, how do you connect? Like, what are, what are the things? And so the first thing Bubba does is he sees a sign up for the chess club. Bubba goes to the chess club and he knows immediately that is not his people. That, like, that's not a good fit for him. That's not who he is. So he sees another sign-up sheet. It's for JV basketball. Well, Bubba, he played a little, little in elementary. He thought, I could probably do that. And so Bubba goes out for the team. It's tryouts. Bubba's there, and, and he, 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 he sees all the other kids coming in. Well, these kids all look like they were born in a Nike commercial, right? They're like gazelles out there. Like they're underhand, left hand, right hand, shoot the three, all of that stuff, dribble behind the back, through the legs. And he's like, I don't know if this is my place. Remember, Bubba is strong, bales of hay, you know, bunch up apples, could pick up shoulders like this. Like he's tractor strong, tractor strong. And so he goes out for the team, but here's what's happening at the same time. Guess who's going out for the cheerleaders? She's up in the balcony looking over and he sees her. And that doesn't do do Bubba well. He's now dribbling and it looks like a chicken is running in front of him. He can barely dribble the ball because he's so nervous about this girl. Bubba miraculously makes the team. He makes the team. And he knows like, I'm gonna be a bench warmer. I'm gonna be the 12th man on the team. I don't know if this is really my place, but I made the team. And so he just goes out there and he's kind of feeling bad about himself. He tries to shoot some threes once in a while. He gets the ball stolen often in practice until his coach pulls him over. And he says, Bubba, what are you good at? And and the coach meant basketball, but Bubba naturally goes, I'm really fast at milking the cows, right? Like that's what I'm good at. And he's like, no, 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 like, 
what, what, what's your skill out here, Bubba? And Bubba thinks for a moment, and, and then the coach says, Bubba, you're great at rebounding. I've seen you. People are flying away because when you get to that board, and I need you to play in the paint. I don't need you to shoot the three-pointer. Like we have other guys who can do that. But for you, I need you. I need you to focus on your rebounding because if you rebound, guess what? We get more shots and the team wins. It's not about, it's not about each one of us. It's not about the three-point shooters. It's not about the point guard. It's about us working together. But Bubba goes, okay. And Bubba starts to move up. He goes from 12 to the seventh on the bench. He's getting in a little bit more. It's game four. Two kids have already fall, fouled out. They've already fouled out. And coach goes, Bubba, go in there. 30 seconds left in the game. They're down by two. Crosstown rival, right? Bubba goes in. They pass Bubba the ball. Well, what does Bubba do? He shoots. And the crowd's like, oh. And the coach is like, no, right? Like that's, like that's a bad idea. And it's not even close. But Bubba remembers his role on the team in that moment, rebound ball. And Bubba, whew, and kids are flying to the side between two rebounders, between two defenders, he grabs the ball. And what does he do? He passes it to the Nike commercial. The kid out there on the three-point line, the kid shoots it, Game over. What did Bubba understand? He understood his strengths. He understood his weakness. He understood his role. And it made everyone better. In the same way, in the same way, God has given you a gift for the betterment of the body. He has given you a gift he has given you a gift and we form one body. We form one team. We're connected to each other. We belong to each other. Uh, Bubba, he, 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 he belonged to the JV basketball team that day. He felt that. And so, back to how he connected with Sally Sue. Bubba, again, not great with the words. He walks by Sally Sue and he said, see that rebound? And she kind of had like a little pity on him and they began to talk in that moment. He had confidence, why? Because he knew who he was. He was connected into that team. In the same way, you need to know who you are. God has gifted you, you matter, you have a purpose. You have a purpose and your part of your belonging is connected to understanding, to renewing your mind, to being connected uh, to, to, to who you are in your strengths and in your weaknesses. Talk so long, my, 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 my thing shut off here. And, and so, <laughs> what would happen? What would happen if you, if you, you understood who you really were? You took off the mask of projection, the AI that's in you, and you recognize that God wanted to bring people into your life that you can bless with your gifts and that can help you in your weaknesses. And some of you go, well, I don't want to be like, I'm good at something because it's not humble. Well, maybe, like according to this passage, it, 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 when you're good at something and you have a gift at something and you're using it for the betterment of the body, what, it, what is it? It's actually loving. It's not arrogant, it's loving. It's gifting. It's what God has given you. He specially gave you this gift. He, he, he uniquely created you to do what you're supposed to do in the middle of this thing. And we belong to Who? We belong to each other. We belong to each other. It's how we function. We need to think accurately about ourselves. It's how God sees us. Why? Because you have a role to fill. You have a role to fulfill. Some are feet, some are hands. If the, the hands don't do what they're supposed to do, the feet have to step in, and the, the feet aren't great at what they're supposed to do. It's same ver, vice versa. This is the, the question of who God has made us. God has given us this gift. You might be a jack of all trades, a master of none, but God says, I've given you a gift that I want you to focus on for the good of the body. Let's look at the next verses. 
We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it's teaching, then teach. If it's to encourage, then give encouragement. If it's giving, then give generously. If it's to lead, do it diligently. If it's to show mercy, do it cheerfully. So anybody see the commercial Captain, like the Captain Obvious commercials? I love those commercials. If you don't know what it is, the guy states like the most obvious point. Uh, 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 And this is Paul in this passage. Like he says, if you have the gift of teaching, what are you supposed to do? (laughs) Teach, right? Like it's not that hard. Like if you have the gift of encouragement, encourage. Like it's not like this is, this is one of those easy past it, passages, Captain Obvious, but we need Captain Obvious to tell us that you have a gift. And, and this is not an exhaustive list. This is not something that, that is all, all the things that are possible, all the things that God has created. It, it says, man, I have strengths. I have weaknesses that God has given me. He has created in me. And, and he says, like, let's, let's use this together because we belong to each other. We belong to each other. And our goal is to love each other, to care about each other, to be the body of Christ together. If you're gifted to counsel and encourage, you're supposed to do that. If you're you're, you're gifted to, to, to lead, do it diligently. You're gifted, you're unique, something to bring to the body of Christ. This is how, this is how we do this. Some of you are in different stages of life. Some of, you are, um, some of you are just having children. Some of you don't have children. Um, some of you are grandmas and grandpas. Some of you are retired. Some of you are not retired. And so I think this is what we do. We, we go, okay, this is the stage of life that I'm in. Okay, what is my strength? What has God given me? What can, what, what can I do for the betterment of the body? And then we focus in on that. We figure out how to do that. We figure out wherever we're at, whatever we're, wherever we go, like that's what we're going to do. But we make a matrix. Like you don't have to be on every committee, every, like everything that's happening. If you're a leader, you don't have to do all of those things, but you have to do something. And it should be a focus. It should be an energy that we're giving. Why? Because we're the body of Christ. We're the body of Christ, not individually, together, together. And so you figure that out. And what happens in that is, first off, we know what our identity in Christ is, that we're son bought and daughters that are, are blood-bought sons and daughters of the Most High, that we are deeply loved by God, that, we, we, that he, he came for us individually, but he, he gave us a family to be connected to, that our weaknesses become our connection point, our strengths become a connection point, and when we do this together, it glorifies him. Look at 1 Peter with me, 4, 10, and 11. If you can switch that for me. It says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received. You received that. God gave you that to serve others as faithful stewards. God is giving you a gift to steward, to use because of his grace. And it comes in various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks with the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides so that in all things, look what it says, God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Like when we do this, you understand who you are, your identity. You understand your purpose. You get connected to community. You can't do this alone. We need each other. We need your weaknesses. We need your strengths. It connects us all together. I need you. You need me. This is how the body functions. This is how God says this is a part of renewing your mind. It's part of us understanding our design that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. We can live in the reality of God made us. He made us this way. And when we do that, we unleash what God has for us. We unleash 
what he's done for us, his good for us. And we understand it, and I think in a totally different way. And so, here's, here, here's it put simply. We understand who we are. We deploy those gifts for the betterment of the body, and we get those things out of it. We get what's our identity, what's our community, what's our purpose. This is how God helps us to, to start to renew our minds, to take off the mask, to, to, to stop living in that AI programming. It's when we do this together. Let's pray together. Father, we come. We're just thankful. We're thankful followers of you. And we're grateful that we get to come and we get to come to you anytime we want to individually and corporately because of what Jesus did for us, that the throne is open to us because of Jesus' blood that was shed for us. God, that you've given us this ability to begin to have renewed minds, to begin to understand what you created in us. We're thankful for the gifts that you've bestowed upon us, that you power up in us. And God, I just ask that for all of us, that we would begin to use our gifts, that we begin to see it through this matrix that you have, that we are, have identity in you, that our purpose and our, and our community is in you, and that it would be all for your glory that we would live in this, this world that you've created in a way that would be pleasing to you as living sacrifices. And we pray this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen.